I think it's a tale of David and Goliath. To go against the storied and famed All Blacks. Coming off a real setback, losing to Uruguay. If you don't play your best, you'll take it to your effing graves. In October, Rugby Pass went behind the scenes with the USA Eagles ahead of their game against the All Blacks at the FedEx Field in Washington. A game that fell outside of the Autumn International Player release, meaning the Eagles would have to field a largely MLR-based team, making an already daunting task all the more impossible. While the game may have been for all intents and purposes a foregone conclusion, we wanted to see where rugby in the States is at, and ultimately, where it is going. Told to you by those on the front lines, the game comes off the back of a shock defeat to Uruguay, which puts the Eagles in the unwanted position of needing to beat Chile to qualify as the Americas 2 for the World Cup. Well, the All Blacks are in Washington this weekend taking on the USA. Good for the game over there, you think, lads? Well, it's good to get the All Blacks playing the USA in America, but let's hope the USA don't get hosed. Let's be honest. The US needs to be playing top-tier rugby if they're going to improve. Be good experience. Let's stay positive. It'll be good experience for them. As co-chairman of the Congressional Rugby Caucus, along with DC delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton, I'm very excited to see the legendary New Zealand All Blacks take the pitch against the USA national men's rugby team when they face off this Saturday, October 23rd. Men and women's rugby are fast-growing sports in America and give us all a chance to put partisan politics aside. That's why bringing an international event of this magnitude to the D.C. area is a tremendous accomplishment for USA Rugby, Events D.C., and Left Field Live. The match is an important barometer in the United States' ability to host future world-class events, including the Rugby World Club. Well, I think, you know, in terms of growing the game, it's, it's a market that we need to go to. I think, you know, we saw in Asia when we went to Japan. Uh, what a huge success that was. And I, I think America would be great, whether it's going to be in the next two or three World Cups, who knows, but there's a lot of investment coming out of there. Uh, there's a real appetite um, for rugby union. Uh, first time I saw a game was I was at uh, one of my neighbor's house down the road from where I lived, and they had these old like VHS tapes of, of rugby games. Their, their dad just somehow had these tapes, and we watched, I want to say it was an Ireland-England game, like from way back when. Um, I didn't really know what was going on, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, I watched my first game of rugby on a VHS tape, uh, which makes me seem old, but it was of the 2003 Rugby World Cup, and I remember watching the All Blacks play against Wales in a uh, pool stage match. Shane Williams was probably one of the smaller guys out there, so I automatically kind of put myself in his shoes, kind of wanted to be like him, but watching the All Blacks was definitely something special. Uh, this would be pretty sweet to play this weekend. Yeah, man. How many is your number? 82 now. No? No. Oh, no. More enough. I saw my first game of rugby in 2016. I had been out to one practice, and after that first practice, man, I fell in love with it. I'd played most organized sports in America growing up. Just the flow and the physicality, and how almost, I don't know how to say, it's like aesthetically pleasing. It's almost like a art form in motion. Uh, so I remember stumbling across a sevens tournament ages ago um, on TV and being very confused and trying to figure out what was going on, but it certainly looked entertaining. And then in uh, high school, um, I went out for our baseball team, didn't make the team, got cut, um, and needed something to do. And rugby happened to be a spring sport in high school, and so it kind of worked out that it was uh, something that there was no expectation of you knowing what was going on or having any ability in it. Uh, my dad's a big rugby fan. He's a big fan of Australia. It was about like 12 in the morning and uh, my dad woke me up to go watch a rugby game and it was, I want to say it was like Australia 
and uh, the All Blacks, and he woke me up, and I was so confused at the time. I was a little kid, and I was like, you know, why are we watching the game so late at night? And you know, I was complaining to him, but later did I know it was just the time zone differences, and it was a real big match. Um, I was 11 years old when I first saw the game. Uh, my uncle and my cousin introduced me to it after playing football for a number of years. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm living the dream. Like, ever since I found the game of rugby, it's been a dream to play professional rugby and to play for my country. What I'm looking forward to the most is the opportunity again to represent my country, to represent this team, to represent my friends, my family. That's all that matters. I think representing a, a country is it's amazing. The group of boys that are here is, I, I feel that like I'm inside a family. I think about when I was a kid, watching, you know, professional sports teams sing the national anthem, just thinking how cool that was for them to do that on the big stage. And now I'm blessed enough to do that and it, it just means so much to play the sport in this country. On the 9th of October, 2021, the Eagles faced Uruguay. The prize? A spot in Pool A of the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Uruguay made history that day with a 34-15 win. The first time the South Americans have secured the America's number one pool position a result head coach Gary Gold describes as an abomination. Yeah, so after the loss against Uruguay, obviously the, the guys dissembled and, and managed to get a little bit of time back at home and uh, actually all got together again today for the first time. So all assembled here on the Sunday um, before the All Blacks game. and. Uh, one of the first things on the agenda is we're going to have to address, you know, what did happen against Uruguay. What is going to be the difference between what we've now shown theoretically and we've shown in clips on training? What's the difference? What is going to be the difference between we're just going to go through the motions or we are actually going to make a change? We're going to step up to the plate. We're going to come away from this weekend where the rugby world who are watching the number one team in the world play against us are actually going to go, wow, fucking USA are here to play. What's going to make the difference? I think with a lot of these things, there, there needs to be a bit of soul searching to figure out who, who you are as a rugby player and who we are as a rugby team. You know, you could, it's, an interesting game to have to have to start to pick up the pieces against, but at the same time, um, the pressure cooker of this week is a great opportunity to galvanize all those pieces. Obviously, that loss to Uruguay was pretty disappointing. Um, you know, we, we had we had beaten them at home the week before and went down there with with a lot of confidence, and you know, we got punched in the mouth early, and we just could never uh, never really get back in the game, unfortunately. We got taught a pretty tough lesson. It's the lesson of humility, something that we needed. We, we, might have, uh, we might have been a little too excited after that first win in Glendale. With that said, you know, that's, that's the life of sports. There's a winner and there's a loser most games. And, um, you know, you, you can sit there and, and, and cry about it or get back on the horse and just head up and, and, and move on to the next one. Obviously, New Zealand's going to be a, a much bigger task than Uruguay. But I think, uh, you know, with, with the team we have at the moment and uh, hopefully a big crowd behind us, we can, uh, we can make some people proud. How many scrums did we do last week in Uruguay? Fuck all. None. Why did we scrum so well? Because we made a buy -in. They made a buy -in. If they take it to the line, and Barrett takes it to the line, and he's as flat as fuck, and you now got to make a decision, and Rob's asking you to make that read, and you do have David McKenzie on the inside, and you make the read and you get it wrong, we'll get it wrong, we'll learn from that. That's fine. But don't be in a situation that you stood four yards back and you just let him run at us. And then they chipped you and they made a fool of us. This is 100% your mindset this weekend. Um, Rich McCaw and I were sitting at the, in Chicago when the All Blacks lost to Ireland. And we literally both looked at each other in the grandstand and went, oh God, thank God we weren't playing. 
because that was the first time the All Blacks had lost to Ireland. So you've got to, you've got to have a crack. And you, I, I often look at teams like France. You know, the French, when I was playing, nine times out of ten, they didn't think they could beat us. So what did they do? They played the game of their lives. They just played fluent rugby and blow me down. They, they beat us. And that's, that's, that was a fair for us. But yeah, you've just got to take, take us on. And you know, we've seen of late in the last few years um, where the All Blacks have been beatable. Uh, by teams that have taken us on, not for 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes, but 80, 90 minutes. You know the All Blacks went down on an overseas tour and lost to Munster once? Did you guys know that? Do you know how many provincial games they've lost when they've come to South Africa over the years when they used to tour? Do you think it's not possible to go out and fucking put it to them? So we have to put them under extreme pressure for fucking 80 minutes this week. And that means when we carry and we play, we play and we carry. It ain't over till it's over with them. We all tend to say that in sport, don't we? I had that experience which oh, still hurts today. East Wales v, v the All Blacks. And since then I was captain, a young captain that they'd, they'd put in charge of them. We were leading 3-0. Uh, and that's all we needed. Barry dropped a goal, just shaved the post. Just shave the post, yeah, it doesn't go over. They weren't in the game. We had them. We had them, even though it was only 3-0. And yet, in the last, the dying seconds of the game, they find a way. They scored three all. We didn't lose it. We didn't lose it, but we didn't win it. Yeah, so you know, I played against the Old Blacks uh, about 23 times in my, in my career. And I think what gave me the best chance of success was the preparation, you know, making sure that I left no stone unturned. You know, you, you have to go out there and know that you're facing, you know, one of the best teams in the world. And, um, you know, you have to make sure that you're at your best and you give yourselves yeah, the best possible chance of success. You know, go and play as a team, you know, be confrontational in everything that you do. You know, they're human beings like us, you know, like them. So you got you to gotta treat them with not too much respect. But guys, get your minds right now that I'm asking you to take yourself to a dark place this weekend. Okay, and let's make sure we see you at the track. Uh, it's a massive challenge for sure. Uh, I think, it, you know, irrespective of last week's results, there, it was always going to be a massive challenge. But certainly last week we learned a lot of hard lessons about what happens when you don't pitch up on a given day. Um, and this weekend, more than ever, it's any any mistake we make is going to be punished, and we're aware of that um, very viscerally. So now, um, so I think that uh, our preparation this week just has to be spot on, um, and execution has to be spot on, uh, and that's uh, that's the exciting challenge that we presented ourselves with. They want, they want to film our creek games. Oh, anyone in particular who's terrible at it? No, a what? Greek? Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. We no, actually have not. a score named after you. No, what? 96. Oh, no. no. oh yeah. I'm good. He's the GOAT. But in, in, in Greek terms, that's not the greatest of all time. It's actually a little GOAT. I am the GOAT. Yeah. Oh, my son! <laughs> oh, my son! <laughs> oh, my son. <laughs> Your dad's getting uh, mic'd up here playing cards and hopefully he won't become a goat. So say, <laughs> say hi to the boys. I gotta go. Alright, my son. Banana. Banana, I love you. So it's basically like a game of trumps. It's kind of similar to Spade. spades. Or euchre. Or euchre, yeah. 500. And you have to um, basically just guess what you're gonna get. <laughs> I got one that's not true, better than I'm sweet. Who missed? Bryson? I missed. Oh, no, Bobby. When you're playing cards, just the same thing Michael Scott always says. Just live by the words of Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. You're good. <laughs>
there wasn't a professional league in the U.S. Um, eventually there was pro rugby and now the MLR and those two leagues alone have grown the game enormously. I think one of the biggest hurdles for USA Rugby and rugby in general in the U.S. is just getting awareness out. There's so much you know, competition for people's time. Football, our basketball, baseball, these sports take precedent over rugby right now because rugby doesn't have the backing and the money involved in it really to uh, hang with those guys. You know, we've got to get it started more on a, a youth level. With the team we're playing against the weekend, these guys have been playing since, you know, they can walk. And a lot of us, unfortunately, don't get to start till our late teens, sometimes later. I think, you know, grassroots rugby is quite important. So investing right, you know, at the beginning, you know, um, spending time where with, uh, you know, kids in the inner city schools, you know, happen to go to the game there. So I think that's where, you know, the seed can be laid. Well, it's, it's a win-win. And a lot of people say, well, why are we playing this match? I don't look at it that way. This is a necessary um, evil, if you will, uh, for Team USA to compare themselves to the best. But as long as we play our best, and I think we will, Gary Gold gets the best out of these guys, it's going to be an, a great experience for that team, plus the fans. Just to get the game in front of them, more often than not, convert somebody. It doesn't take two, three times for someone to see the game. Once they see it once, they're pretty much hooked. I think there's massive potential here. I think one advantage that USA has is that there's no history of professional rugby. Until very recently, the amateur nature of the game in America, um, you did not have a consistent pipeline of talent coming through. And so I think MLR, with its kind of professionalization and therefore broadening of the talent pool, is gonna be a huge boon to USA rugby because we will have that kind of funnel of players coming in. And with a country of 300 million and the sports appetite in America, there's no doubt that it'll continue to grow. This bind, it was way less important than your connection with the prop in front of you. Yeah. So you can get that, and then you can worry about that side bind later. Yeah, the thing is, is like, yeah. we're, we're hitting together as a group, that's fine, but like, I don't need to reach onto a body, I can reach for a shoulder blade. But right, we can hit together, all right, and then we pull in tight. It's really about bringing a team together, um, and this US team is playing for the first time together you know, lots of new, new fresh faces. That's the challenge of being an American rugby coach, right? No matter where you're from, is bringing a team together under pressure, playing against world-class opposition. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive challenge. It's a huge challenge in terms of, you know, the landscape of the country and the size of the country. And I don't think people understand how vast the US is. It's quite different, um, you know, coaching in a country where they don't grow up necessarily playing rugby and only are introduced to it many, many times only at high school and most of the time just at university or at college. Luckily, by and large, as a group, we've been, we've been in camp for quite a long time already. So it's really good, you know, very few guys are coming in for the first time. Bring it, bring it, bring it. So just a few clips. All right, so just a few clips. Argentina, these are a couple things that, so let's watch it, boom. They get a quick ball, that's pot on. That's exactly what we want. Ball in, ball out. We can now play, get over the game line, get around the corner. That's exactly what we want. This is what we don't want, is a little fuck up from the hooker in transition where the ball gets stuck a little bit. All right, then the pressure's gonna come on us. All right, again, similar situation here. You see the angles, let's not kick out. We'll try to work around us. Now this next clip, all right, look at Argentina. Similar principle, we'll give the front. All right, look how they hit. They hit as a group of three. All right, he comes in late. Now they're disjointed. All right, and this is where they, they will be dangerous for us. All right, if we don't hit as that three and four, all right, group coming down the line, we're gonna be in a really difficult position. All right, especially when we give them the front. Because they'll have a little bit of headwind. All right, it'll be really difficult to then regain. All right, if they hit it from the front to, to alleviate, sorry, hit it from the top end of the mall, all right, to stop it. All right, so we're banking on that back door. We need to get the fucking back door right. We'll walk through uh, in a second out here. Nick? If we've done our job and forced them to the front. Yeah. Cam, just make sure your front lifter like doesn't lift you. Yeah. Right. No, we, we, we talked about it yesterday, so we've got to. So we can, we can get hey, if, they, if they do go to the front, I just say cancel. And if I say cancel, yeah. they 
you know, yeah. the, the only job then is to take that away. Yeah, take the front prop away. That's it. That's your only role after that. You can throw that back this? Yeah, of course. So, so fellas, with our, our back door where we have the, the lock coming in behind the front lifter there, and Argentina does the same thing, like, you could argue that it might be a bit illegal, but it all happens at the same time, so it's totally fine by the referee's look. If you look at how late four comes in, it's so fucking obvious that that's an illegal side entry. And so that's why it's even more crucial that we hit it as they're coming down and blow it up at source, because we can get away, away with all this kind of side entry type shit, um, as long as it's all just one big explosion versus this piecemeal stuff. Massively, massively. And you know, four was supposed to hit with seven, which would create that scene that we're trying to aim for. All right, happy with that. Everybody good? And we still got our Berlin. We all good with that? So we need to attack those seats, create the separation, all right, especially with how tight they are at the front. Create the separations, all right, especially four and five. We're um, three and one, we're about to do those seats. All right, that's massive for us. All right. There are a lot of guys in Major League Rugby that have jobs outside of the sport. Obviously the salaries aren't as great as they could be uh, across the world and compared to other American sports, but it's getting to a point where it's, it's livable. The sacrifice to be a professional athlete for rugby in America is, yeah, exactly what it is. It's a sacrifice. You got to sacrifice a lot of time. Um, you sacrifice other job opportunities. Hey Nate, what you doing? Uh, trying to not get fired. Uh, yeah, so I've actually, you know, I graduated college before professional rugby was ever a thing. So I've been working a, you know, a nine to five, quote unquote, um, since I graduated from college. And rugby has kind of come about very slowly. And so I've managed to continue to um, work at that job as rugby has gotten uh, to be a larger time commitment as professionalization has happened. Um, so I work as a data analyst for a real estate company. I have a few different things that I do outside of rugby. Um, one of my jobs is coaching. Uh, I love doing that. I love being a part of the rugby community out in Southern California. Right now, I'm currently the head coach of San Marcos High School, and we have a big season coming up ahead of us. And then I also uh, started my own rugby brand. It's called Product of Rugby, um, something I'm really proud about, really passionate about. And so I put a lot of my time and energy outside of rugby into that. I got into real estate just after the World Cup. I figured, man, I'm almost 30. I never really had a, a, another job other than rugby after university. So I got my real estate license and um, I worked for a company in New Orleans called L Plus A Retail, doing some commercial real estate on the side. Having a job and playing rugby is tough to balance sometimes. Uh, fortunately for me, it wasn't, it's not really a necessity. So I can kind of pick and choose when I want to do it. You know, whereas I, there are a couple of guys, and, you know, quite a few guys in the MLR who do have to juggle you know, full-time jobs with families and and play rugby as well on the side. But it is it is tough and it is a decision, a tough decision that a lot of guys have to make whether they can afford to, to play this game. A sleeping giant. That's what the rest of the rugby world has long considered the United States. A country that produces arguably the greatest athletes in the world. The job for the Eagles? To provide a second chance for all the talent who fall through the cracks of America's most dominant sports. No, in terms of the crossover athletes, I definitely uh, don't think it's an experiment that's been tried and failed. You know, the rest of the world seem to think that it's just footballers who can make the, the crossover, but it's not at all. You know, it's guys who've who've played basketball, it's guys who've played ice hockey, it's a lot of wrestlers have made the crossover, you know, wrestlers who've played a little bit of football, or, uh, and even soccer players who've, who've made the crossover, you know, to, to wanting to come and play rugby. What's the transition like from football to rugby? It's uh, probably one of the easier transitions because it is a contact sport, um, but it's definitely something that you have to get used to running around without the pads and going full contact still the same. Um, and then I just enjoyed the way that I was treated more <laughs> around the rugby guys, whether it's a tighter uh, brotherhood or camaraderie, um, that's for the individual person to answer, but I, I do think it has been a lot tighter for me. Um, I started real late. I was new to the game. I was introduced uh, by my dad. He had a buddy that was coaching in a local team in high school and I only played basketball and football. 
Uh, so during the spring, I um, had some off time and my dad asked, you know, wanted to, suggested to me to, just to stay active. So rugby was an option and I ended up falling in love with it. <laughs> Call me naive, but I honestly just loved playing the game so much. I mean, at first I was playing it just for fun, you know, staying fit and staying active. You know, I've experienced some things through rugby. I kind of labeled it my passion. So, and I also talked about it with my coach, you know, you know, as I was coming to the end of my college career, he kind of asked me if I wanted to, you know, further my rugby career and I actually said, yeah. And he warned me saying that it wasn't much pay, but I told him, you know, I'm not really in it for the money. You know, I grew up with no money, so it hasn't been much of a factor for me. I just love playing the game so much. Uh, I remember I went into my first uh, MLR contract negotiation and I told them um, I would do this for free, so just pay me whatever you think is fair. And so that's pretty much my approach to the whole thing is uh, I love the sport and I love the game. Um, and so if I get a bit of coin for doing what I would al otherwise be doing, um, I've got no issue with that. By and large, it's about taking these athletes who've you know, probably played multiple sports across their, their high school and college careers and you know, adapting them into into improving their skill levels and their, and, and their level of understanding of, of how to play the game at the highest level. So we're just on a, on a very difficult journey at the moment to grow the game in the States. USA Rugby are trying to spread their wings far and wide and you know, get academies across the country and ensure that you know, we're doing everything we can to capture young players. And then obviously the MLR are doing a huge job in terms of growing the game at club level. But, but our big challenge is the fact that we need, we need game time and we need regular uh, quality opposition. Uh, that's probably a reason why this week is going to be a, a formidable challenge for us. When was launched? Two? Oh, right. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Getting up with the family. A little bit. Some of the boys back home. Uh, yeah, they're trying to keep in touch right now, so they asked me how I'm doing with training and stuff. I'm trying to keep my cool. Oh, so we got a meeting. I'm about to be late. Okay, turnover ball, excited. Look at the guys getting that back, calling the ball. Space is there. Okay, when we're in a turnover, opportunity like this, I want us to look for the offloads. Okay, because what sort of defense are we going to get on a turnover ball? Unstructured, Unstructured broken defense. Which, which is good for what? Offense. Offense, for our attack. <coughs> okay, so if we can keep bending the defensive line, it's gonna, we're going to keep making yard after yard after yard. Okay, if we're getting go for the ball, we've got to fucking get in there and blow the cunt out. Okay, because we know that these guys are going to come for our breakdown. That is a blaster. You have to take that body weight, and it's you and him. And I'm telling you guys, they are coming. They, they, they're going to tackle and then get back up and they're going to counter out through that breakdown. We are going to have to be as violent as possible in cleaning this breakdown out. And Steve's right, it starts with the ball carrier. You have to use your footwork, you have to dominate that collision. You have to use your body to get that ball long, but then you're going to have to clean bodies out of the way, not like this. We get in game line, what do we want to do afterwards? We want to stay flat and we want to keep getting on top of them. Okay, so get that game line. Instead of standing still for the beat, let's go hard. If I'm a team at the back of that thing and I want to go wide, I can just call the ghost and then we can go to the width. Okay, but we've got to keep on top of them. Okay, otherwise the defense recovers and then we're, in a, we're going to be in a shit fight. Are we always going to ghost that off the sideline? Yes, yeah. always going to ghost. Yeah. Yep, so we're going to ghost that first pod, ghost that second pod, and then we can play off that, that, yeah. that third pod. If, if we get to the edge there, let's have a fucking crack. Let's yeah. go smoke. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, so what we're gonna do is instead of the prop coming into the back here, he's gonna panel in into this, into this 19 here. Okay, then seven will fold out, two will run at the back of his, at the back of this guy's back. Okay, then the nine and the, the blind winger down there. So it'll be a four man lineup with the nine in the front. I really want the guys to, to work extraordinarily hard at training. I mean, we're on a, we're on a very serious quest for personal improvement. And as a group, we, we're particularly driven. So remember, he's, uh, the lifters are up, right? And we're, we're, looking, we're looking at the hips as soon as we see Dino's feet start to come down, then we pile in. So this is not the way it's gonna be, right? It's gonna be, he's gonna be coming down as we hit him. So we're gonna hit him about there. We'll have plenty of space to get into him, but we just gotta make sure our trigger's right. Mm -hmm. It's on American soil, it's the All Blacks. People get to see this team playing here and it will only feed the beast that is American rugby because Americans are gonna want their team to do better and they'll say, hey, why are we losing to a team uh, that has four million people in the country? As he's, he's come down, he's landed, he's in his position, maybe he's a little bit of a split split arms, you absolutely pile it in. This, this is what we're talking about, about this being a mentality. You actually put your body on the line for three seconds and you end it until that thing is either on the floor or okay. There are some challenges, but you know, the just rewards are, are also very extensive as well, you know, to, to work with a group of players who are so enthused to want to improve. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we were able to, to go on a bit of a winning streak and, you know, win 10 games in a row. And, you know, where USA Rugby want to go down the line and with the potential of, of hosting a World Cup in a couple of years time, I think that the landscape's looking very exciting for, for, for rugby down the line, but it's going to take a while. It's not going to happen overnight. Everyone got the picture. <laughs> Everyone, what is the key that I want us for our cat? Attitude. 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 What else? Violence. 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 Yeah, what else? Get excited. Fucking hell, get excited. Let's go. So going into a game where most people probably just write you off, it's great for us. We've got nothing to lose. We get to go out there and leave everything on the line. Um, I think all the pressure is on them, really. Um, we like that. We like that pressure. We like that fear of failure. Um, we like our success. And you know, the best prepared people in the world normally win. Uh, but to be like that, you need to make a lot of sacrifices. And the All Blacks make huge sacrifice. Ultimately, if everyone's doing that, you know, you're pretty unbeatable. Funny how quickly this comes around again, every week. And uh, it's the last one for the year. So I think we've spoken quite a lot about the significance of um, this short time together, um, honoring every guy who's gonna take the field tomorrow, who's gonna put on one of these jerseys and what it means. Um, yeah, I'm very, very chuffed to, to welcome uh, Eagle number 451, Shalom Sunayola. You know, tomorrow's about opportunities and experiences, right? But more importantly, it's going to be about your personal legacy, right? And every minute of the game tomorrow, you'll make probably over 80 different decisions, repeated efforts, you know, your role in that minute. And that's sort of how you define your legacy that I'm talking about, that you hang your head on. So it's going to be epic. The moment when you run out, face the hucker. I mean, I remember it, it's vivid. You know, you, you have an opportunity to put yourself up against and measure it guys, uh, against the best tomorrow, right? As an athlete, as your character, and, um, you know, we're extremely proud of you guys. Number two, Eagle 5-2-3, Dylan Fawcett. <laughs> Number nine, Eagle 4-9-1, Nate Augsburger. Number 14, Ryan James. And last but never least, number 12, Eagle 497, Bryce Campbell. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be very quick this time, guys. Been through a lot in the past you know, couple months and we've spoken a lot about the people we want to be, the teammates we want to be, the team we want to be, and just for tomorrow, just make each other proud. If we do that, it's all that really matters. Make your teammate proud.
That's it. Let's do it, boys. Just for his uh, first count. So take it in and know your your mom's pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah. so. so who's all in town? Uh, uh, my mom, my younger sister, and my uh, and then my. I'm super excited that I am able to have some family members out there and my fiance in the stands. So I'm looking forward already to the post match. I get to see them after my first cap against the All Blacks. As long as I gave them all and left it all on the field, that's all I can ask for. Um, you know, whether I made mistakes or not, just being able to push forward through these 80 minutes, and as long as I, you know, put out in front of my, you know, my family and my teammates and give it all that I got. I think that's all I can do. Feeling good. Ready to roll. <laughs> Gonna be a special one tomorrow. The players will be excited beyond their expectations. They'll have to harness that energy it's in front of this national team, the USA Eagles, to go against the story that feigned all black. I think it's a tale of um, David and Goliath. It's like a work of fine for these Eagles guys. They're playing against some of the best players in the Washington, world. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital for Team USA versus the All Blacks. It does not get better than this. I'm most looking forward to representing the United States. That's. That's all that matters to me, to be able to get another opportunity to wear that, to wear that jersey. I know that in you know, 10 years, 20 years down the road, um, I'm gonna be looking back at this one. I just wanna look back with pride about the way that uh, we as a team and I personally played. What I wanna remember is just the feeling of giving everything, everything I've got, and just hug, hugging a teammate after the game, knowing he's done the same. There's, there's a general recognition that a game like this, where we're pitting ourselves against the best in the world, um, it's not a game about the scoreboard. Uh, it's a game about going out and getting stuck into uh, opposition that is exactly who we want to test ourselves with. Welcome everybody. So exciting to see the All Blacks in America. In terms of the contest for me, it's all about how quickly the All Blacks find their rhythm with all the changes and just how much of a fight the USA will put up. You know, we're expecting a very sort of an invigorated Eagles team. You know, we expect them to carry hard. And, and play without a commitment, which you kind of always expect out of the state. So, you know, I think they'll be really combative in that space. Although I'm sure they're under no illusions that they need to be brave to get anywhere near the All Blacks today. The underdog is not, it's, it's nothing new to us. You know, it, it's something that we're very, uh, very aware of, but it's also something that we, we use to fuel us. At the end of the day, it's just another, another rugby game. 15 men coming in to, to play against 15 men. There's a lot of fire in our bellies, almost uh, playing with house money or nothing to lose mentality. If I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm Gary Gold before that match, what do I say to the guys in the locker room? Herb Brooks said, if you lose this game, you'll take it to your effing grades. I would change it to, if you don't play your best, you'll take it to your effing grades. United States coming off a real setback, losing to Uruguay. The captain is Bryce Campbell. Sam Whitelock, the sole survivor of the All Black team that 10 years ago this weekend won the Rugby World Cup, leads out a team that features a lot of young players. Walking out on that field and, and, and you know, standing in front of the Hakka will be just uh, a moment of a lifetime. Each of them will have a, a moment for themselves, a moment for their families, and a moment for the, for the nation. I think I'm just gonna be on top of the world. I'll be ready to hit anybody. Obviously, it's, it's an intimidation thing for them, so try to embrace it as much as possible, respect it, but use it as fuel as well. They come together for the Hakka in which they'll pay a special tribute to their fallen brother, Sean Wainui. 15 men out there putting down a challenge. I think there's no better moment in sports than um, a challenge like that in front of a crowd like that on home soil. 
So I'm, I'm a very passionate guy that with the haka they represent something and they, I don't know, they, is, I have like, uh, I have goosebumps. So I, it, they, it gives me more energy like to play against them. It will say like, ah, come on, I, I, will, I will hit you, man. moment, 11 second pause for the fallen brother, Sean Wainui, the number 11 for the Maori All Blacks, the Chiefs Crusaders, Taranaki and Bay of Plenty, our thoughts with his family and friends. And it will be Luke Carty of the USA to start the match. Crowd well in excess of 40,000 in attendance, real buzz around the ground. Damien McKenzie gets a nice ball away to George Bridge on the outside, Finley Christie with him in support, Jacobson, and what a start! 29 seconds on the clock, and the All Blacks are in from the kickoff. Good tackle by Augsburger, the halfback, but they've got them well stretched. Vai floating a pass away, and over they go, and Ethan de Groot. Combination, McKenzie, nice ball oh, on God. the inside. Dubaya couldn't hang on to it though. It's grabbed by Cam Dolan, the number eight. Tutu breaks one off. He's got Tupaya with him. Damian McKenzie is there, and he's in. McKenzie in or now. The fend coming across Campbell and Hermesis. So Tutu turns it back on the inside. Christie is there. That inside ball. The Eagles just can't cope with it. Holding. Although that time they get a penalty at the offside. Little chip ahead from Maunga. Falls into the hands of Jordan. Oh. And he's in. And not allowing the US any time at all. Just two pie up busting onto it. He's got Fahi oh. with him. It was a lovely pass, but he's been chopped down in the tackle. Back on their own 22. Nice work from Lopetti, the centre. That's a nice step. He's got himself through the hole. Christie, he's got Talaval with him, and Big Angus is in. Having to face the challenge of playing arguably the best team in the world, in the All Blacks. Um, but, you know, those are challenges that are difficult for us at the moment now, but they're, ne they're ne necessary. You know, they're really necessary because, you know, the learnings from these games, um, albeit very tough on the, on the days and weeks post the game, they are very, very good in terms of getting an understanding of, of what it's going to take to be able to play and, and, and excel at, that, at, the, at the highest level of the game. I believe we haven't ever scored tries against the All Blacks. Um, so that's one thing. And then I want to earn the respect of, even if it's just one of the All Blacks, if it were to be a TJ Paranara or um, any of those guys, I just want them to look at me and understand that um, they respected what we put out there on the field, the type of performance that, that I have personally and that the team have. Tough day in the office. Right. Tough first 40 minutes. Okay. It's a damp. It's a damp right now. It's your character right now. Let's not ever fucking give up. Okay. Look at us. No one's passed out on the floor. No one's not been here. Hey, it's up. It's okay. From a defensive point of view, don't go to a ruck unless you're 100% going to steal that ball. We don't. We can't afford to have numbers in the breakdown if, if uh, we're not going to get that ball out. If you make a good decision and you get the steal, I can't do that. No problem down at all. But let's just make good decisions now. And boys, the one thing that's not negotiable in this group, we don't give up. Okay, we play the best team in the world, good, bring it to us. Now we're gonna get better. 
Oh, let's just get yeah. better, man. Come on. Oh. Let's take this fucking opportunity. <laughs> hey, look each other and let's get better. It's fine. It didn't start well. Let's go again now. Come on. Yeah. We realised that um, we're way off the mark in terms of where we want to be. Um, and as a group, we, we're particularly driven. We've let ourselves down this year. I mean, in terms of some of our performances and some of our results. And so what better way to finish off the season by putting in a really formidable performance against the All Blacks team and, you know, at the end of the 80 minutes, you know, hopefully we've earned their respect. Welcome back. 59-7. The All Blacks certainly staring down a record score. Success for us would be putting together a performance that we're proud of, competing in everything we do during the game, putting our bodies on the line, you know, through thick and thin through the game. There's gonna be moments that are tough. There's gonna to be moments that are incredible. Um, it's just giving all of ourselves in every moment and looking back at each other after the game and saying, yeah, I gave everything I had. And that's all you can ask for. And Satutu, Maunga again, dancing, breaking through. Richie Maunga, dazzling footwork. Ball away to McKenzie, Papali'i. Augsburger takes it quickly, Tonga Oya. They weren't back 10, the All Blacks. They go wide, almost into the corner. They've lost shorts. Have they won the try? So Ryan Matias, the man who played sevens rugby for North Harbour, scores a try against the All Blacks. That's their second. It's 73 to 12. Well, it uh, started back in uh, 2011. Um, I graduated high school and I moved to the UK and I was playing for the uh, um, Tondi uh, Rugby Club, which is the um, out of Aberkenfig, Wales. We're sitting at the, I'm sitting at the club and in walks this really big guy and he's wearing a beanie and you could just tell like, oh, this guy's, it's a, it's a big dude. Like, guy actually became a really, really good friend of mine was sitting next to me. He goes, dude, that's, that's Jerry Collins. I was like, no way, I got a, I got a poster of that guy in my room growing up as a kid. Like, so he comes back inside and my buddy goes, hey, uh, JC, I want to introduce you to somebody. You know, of course, comes over, super nice guy. And he goes, oh, what's up? He's like, oh, this is, this is Ryan from the U.S. And I'm like, hey, Ryan, man, it's like, nice to meet you. He's like, oh, what's up? And we just start, we just start talking, right? Oh, I'm from the U.S. And what you doing over here? Oh, I'm playing rugby. And as the kind of night, you know, goes on and shakes out, you know, a bunch of guys are, are headed out to town or whatever. And he's, and I'm, I'm like, all right, well, you know, see you guys later. And he's like, hey, Uso. And I was like, he, I was like, what? And he's just like, hey, you gonna come? And I was like, no, I was just gonna stay. He's like, nah. Nah, you're coming. I was like, oh, okay. And uh, that pretty much kicked it off, man. And, and uh, I mean, I moved over to the UK just to play rugby. And so I would just, I had my own like little training schedule and stuff. And, and this was like a Sunday or something. And uh, he just said, up to, and I'm like, nothing. And he's like, all right, be outside in 30 minutes. So yeah, I ended up hanging out with him. We'd probably hang out like usually Wednesdays and like Sundays, those are their off days and stuff. One time we were leaving um, a restaurant and there's a homeless guy on the ground with no shoes. Jerry literally takes off his shirt, takes off his socks, takes off his shoes, takes off his beanie, opens up his wallet, hands him all the cash, his jacket and everything. And I'm just like, I've never seen that before in my entire life. I've never seen like, I've seen people give someone like five bucks. Like, here you go. I've seen people, someone buy someone meals, but not literally the shirt off their back. 2015 is when he passed away. You know, it was uh, being in New Zealand. It was one of those, it was just like, it, it was tough, man. I mean, the, the, the day that he passed away, it was, the, the country was pretty silent, you know, it was pretty quiet because Jerry was such a, a, a larger than life figure and, and the people who knew him and cared about him, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people that he did, did a lot for their lives. Um, you know, he'd tell me, he's like, you'll, you'll get there, man. You'll, you'll play for the Eagles. And you'll get to play against the All Blacks. It, it's, it's a very special, occasion even more so with with my connection with you know living in New Zealand with Jerry here he is back in the action Matthias picking up the bouncing ball was Jacobson strong run from two player smuggles it away Satutu's there in support Bowden Barrett can put the hammer down Kenzie again oh that he's nailed by Carty but a, a very strong last couple of minutes has seen the All Blacks to a resounding win over Team USA, the Eagles, by 104 to 14. I think success starts with that the U.S. has accepted the challenge, that they are uh, upbeat, uh, and the players, um, 
They put in performance that uh, they're first and foremost as a team, as an individuals, excited about, happy with, that they take this and they use it. They use whatever the result is um, to take back with them to their clubs, to their next national team uh, experience, and they use that to, uh, to drive higher standards and, and, and moving forward. <laughs> it's very difficult to talk about it because at the end of the day, it is still a game. Um, we still are creating memories. <laughs> Maybe some of them in one day we'll laugh about. Um, I hope I can laugh about tonight at some stage. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we're creating memories. And we created some not so great history tonight. We created some amazing history tonight. In as much as the fact that, you know, obviously the first Eagles team ever to score a try and we scored two tries. So that's no mean feat, guys. And uh, let's, let's celebrate the small victories and the small margins. But I think, uh, you know, in the years to come, the kind of memories I, I, I you know, I want to make when I look back on this match are, uh, you know, being able to play uh, in an NFL stadium is always one of them. Unfortunately, with, with rugby, you know, it, it is a growing sport, but it's, you know, it's not on the same level as the, those big, the big fives. 547, Brian Jacks. I think football maybe looks at us as a bit of a competition. They're the gladiator sport. I just think that rugby has something to offer that football doesn't. And uh, when people start to find out, it'll be contagious and rugby will go, um, go to new lengths. You know, it's the desire you're going to get there. I do believe the standard is, is getting higher and higher each year, so there's no doubt it's going to get to the level that we need it to be. You know, we're still fairly new to the game, and, you know, we're kind of like this sleeping giant that everybody talks about. I just think it's a mental battle from here. You know, all the guys on our squad this year, you know, have we just got to fight mentally, not only just physically on the field, but, you know, believe in ourselves and go out there with some confidence whenever we go out to the field.